Hello, Kerry here from The Bloke, and today I'm going to talk about an item that I think every uh, tramper, camper, backpacker, hunter, uh, pretty much anybody who spends any time out in the New Zealand bush should very seriously consider carrying with them at all times, and that's a PLB, or Personal Locator Beacon. A PLB is an electronics device that's designed specifically to be used as a last resort when all other avenues have been exhausted and you're in grave and imminent danger. Activating one of these things will result in a search and rescue operation being conducted to come out and get you. Um, how do you activate an a PLB? Well, this is a demo unit that I've been lent to, to kind of demonstrate. They're actually really, really simple to use. They've been designed to be used in times of uh, high stress and actually in times of potential injury. Um, they all vary a little bit, but essentially, you pop the top off here, unfurl the antenna, and then hit the on button. Uh, generally, they'll uh, indicate they're going through a strobing light or something like that, so you know that it's on, but that's essentially it. Really simple to use, really effective in what they do. Now, before I go into exactly how they work, a couple of quick pointers on actually using a PLB. I guess the first point is these actually need to be registered. They have a unique identifier code in them uh, that is linked up to your personal details. Um, it's actually a regulatory requirement that you register these things, but it's really easy to do. You can go over to beacons.org.nz and register it online. And also, this is where you would go to update your details, which is really important as well. Should you move, or even if you sell the PRB to someone else, they need to register it under their name. Know how to use it. You can't really practice using a live PLB, uh, but make sure, read the instructions, heaps of videos out there. Like I say, it's pretty simple to use, but at least be familiar with the concept of using one. And also remember, most of these have a test function, which you do need to use on them, just to make sure that it's going like it should. Really important fact of these is you should always actually carry them on your person, not on your backpack. Um, Especially in New Zealand bush, if you consider things like river crossing, there's actually a real possibility if everything goes wrong that you may have to dump your pack. And you don't want to dump your pack and have your PRB in the bottom of that pack. So real simple, just make sure you carry it on yourself, not pack right down into the bottom of your pack. Uh, treat it like a GPS unit. Uh, these have a, G a lot of these have a GPS transmitter receiver in them, but they essentially need to be in an open space where they can see the open sky uh, to work as well as they can. So that means a couple of important things. If you manage to get to a hut, don't activate it inside the hut and leave it in there. Uh, you can be in the hut, but make sure this is outside on the, the front balcony or somewhere like that, uh, and ideally not under thick canopy cover. They're getting better as how they get received, but you know, let's make it as easy as possible for them to work. Uh, and once activated, and this is really important, is once activated, leave it on. Even if you accidentally turn it on, playing around with it, messing it, hit the somehow pop it, I don't know. Once you activated it, it's basically sending a signal out telling you that you need help. Uh, and if that suddenly disappears, the people who are conducting the search and rescue are going to treat it like the unit's been damaged or it's somehow missed or something, something's wrong, basically. So if you accidentally activate one of these things, you need to contact the local uh, rescue coordination center or even the police and just notify them that you've done it. Otherwise, the only option you've got is to basically wait until that rescue arrives. Um, and certainly uh, in the case of search and rescue, they'd prefer to know that you're okay and accidentally used it than have to chase you around for any period of time to try and find you. So, how do they work? Okay. When you activate your PLB, uh, the GPS section in them uh, starts basically firing out, trying to find a GPS location for you to identify where you are. Simultaneously, these units start transmitting a 5 watt signal at 406 megahertz, firing off its unique identification code, uh, your GPS location if it's got it, um, bang up into the stratosphere and to um, several uh, waiting dedicated satellite systems. Uh, that's the LEOSAR and the GEOSAR. LEOSAR, which is the Low Earth Orbit Search and Rescue Satellite System, is a network of satellites that are constantly going, rotating around the Earth. 
Uh, on average, they cover the entire planet every 90 minutes. Now, because they're constantly moving, they can hear and therefore actually um, locate where the PLB signal is coming from using something called the Doppler shift effect. Uh, the Doppler shift effect basically means as it passes overhead, the sound that the satellite picks up changes in intensity and frequency, getting the loudest as it's directly or closest to it and then reducing as it passes by. Very similar to the sound of, say, a car or a bus passing you on the street. The pitch uh, increases and gets louder and then decreases and, and gets quieter as it goes by. Using a, a very similar system, this significantly narrows down the area that the transmitting PLB can be from. And remember at this point as well, there's a real good chance that this unit is actually sending up your exact GPS coordinates to that LEOSAR system. And what it does is it gives the uh, location that's determined through the Doppler and your GPS locations and forwards those on. Running alongside the LEOSAR is GEOSAR, or Geosynchronous Search and Rescue System. It's another uh, completely separate system of satellites that essentially uh, orbit around the equator on the planet, staying relatively uh, still, but getting a complete coverage of the planet at any one time. And these will hear the PLB and send its unique location code and again, likely your GPS signal, off uh, to the next step. They can't narrow down exactly where you are like the uh, LEOSAR system can, but remember, there's a real good chance it's sending out your exact GPS locations anyway. So at this point, the LEOSAR and the GEOSAR satellite are sending your potential location GPS coordinates uh, and the fact that you're essentially calling for help and they send these onto a LUT or a local user terminal. Now the local user terminal then forwards the alert to the mission control center. Mission control center is where your unique PLB locator code is kept and then sent to the rescue coordination center where this information is matched with your contact information. So at this point picture starts forming of who you are and where you are. It's also why it's really important that uh, should you shift, change any contact details or even sell the PLB, you need to update it to make sure those contact details are correct. All this information is bundled together and now a SAR response is initiated by the local rescue coordination center. In this case, uh, the RCCNZ is based in Lower Hutt and is part of Maritime New Zealand. Uh, these are the people who start working with uh, the local resources start working through your contact numbers and essentially coordinate search and rescue trying to get help out to you. Now the SAR team sent out to you will have a fairly close approximation of where you are. They're likely to have your GPS location and also the LEOSAR uh, Doppler derived location as well. In addition though, these PLBs are also transmitting at a 121.5 megahertz homing signal, which the SARS team will be able to essentially track and use to come right down onto your location. There you have it, multiple methods of getting your message out there and a unit that's purpose designed for one thing and one thing only, to act as a ded dedicated device of last resort, uh, the final call for help. So, a uh, quick comparison between a couple of different options that people look at when trying to um, have some form of communication out there in the bush. The first one that a lot of people carry out with them is one thing we're all familiar with and that's your, your phone, your cell phone, smartphone or even a uh, satellite phone. Uh, now while we're told the coverage is increasing on these units, I know from personal experience that um, I'm lucky to get reception in the car park uh, of a lot of tramps, let alone a couple of hours up into the bush. Um, my second issue with carrying a cell phone as a primary form of communication is the battery power. Uh, the amount of new toys and uh, bits and pieces that are in these means that it's not really going to have the life of a two or a three day tramp and certainly not enough that I'm going to want to rely on as a safety device. Now these units have GPS unit 
in them. Uh, but of course, uh, it's going to be sucking on battery power uh, a lot more than, say, a dedicated GPS unit. Now, a more traditional cell phone or even a satellite phone is not going to have GPS tracking in it. So there's a real good chance you're going to be able to contact somebody but still not know exactly where you are. Uh, and often they find that when people are calling for help, they are generally lost. Finally, try dropping one of these into a river or getting it overly wet in the water or anything like that. They're really just not designed as robust as a dedicated, excuse me, unit like a PRB. GPS units. Uh, I always carry my E-Trex 30 with me, uh, the Garmin unit. Um, but I guess there's one fundamental problem that I would hope people would realize is that these only receive GPS, they're not transmitting. So you're gonna be able to know where you are, but that doesn't actually allow you to contact anybody else to let them know that you're in trouble or where you are. And also the last one is your satellite messages, uh, which are your spots uh, and several other products like that. Now what's really cool about those units is they often have a all good messaging system so that you can just send out a message to people to let know, everyone know that you're okay. There is a few issues with them though. Generally, they're gonna be on commercial frequencies, they're gonna be limited in power compared to a PLB, and I guess fundamentally my issue with them is they are commercially based. They don't have access to the GeoSAR and LeoSAR satellite system, and it's not an established multinational government-based system that's there for the sole purpose of providing help. Remember also that the phones, the spot units, PLB, satellite phones, anything like that, they're not going to be trans transmitting that very important 121.5 megahertz homing signal that all the PLBs are able to do. That significantly decreases the amount of time that it takes for people to actually find you on these. More than likely, and this is myself included, you're actually going to end up carrying multiple forms of communication out into the bush. I'm going to be carrying my GPS unit, a PLB, I may have my phone on me. Uh, but I guess if, if you're wanting something where you can just text people or message people and let them know they're okay and just as a form of communication, then a phone or one of the spot units or something like that is actually going to work really, really well. But I'd just like to suggest to people that um, if you want to be carrying a dedicated, specialised final call for help, the only way to go is a PLB. Thanks. Go get one.